Hey, good Thursday evening, everyone. Welcome back, Weather Geeks. It is another edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on this uh, Thursday evening. We're going to talk about the short term first because that's the good news and that's the easy part. Uh, distinct back edge to the clouds this evening at about 8 p.m. Pushing to the east and this nice clear slot through here will work in as we go through the overnight. And with a clear sky and with light winds and drying air, the air mass is drying out. That's a recipe for a cooler night. We'll get down well into the 50s tonight. Good night to open up the windows and uh, get some fresh air, that is for sure. Uh, rain with front number one is off to the east, and then front number two is producing a lot of severe weather out across the uh, Plain States, Kansas into parts of Nebraska included. Look at all these severe thunderstorm warnings out here. Now this, uh, this front number two is a stronger front. Check out the temperatures behind it, especially up towards the U.S.-Canadian border. Uh, it's uh, no higher than the mid-50s this evening in parts of Minnesota and North Dakota. And uh, this air mass will modify some, but not a whole lot. So we still are on track for a chilly, chilly weekend. All right, let's uh, discuss tomorrow's rain, first of all. Uh, I do think tomorrow starts with some sun. Nice start to the day. Here's tomorrow morning at the bus stop. The kids will be just fine. No problems getting off to work as far as the weather goes. As we get into the afternoon tomorrow, here's 2 p.m. here on the NAM model, North American model. Uh, let me take off the isobars here, make this a little less cluttered. Uh, at uh, mid-afternoon tomorrow, some showers pushing into northwest Ohio. And of course, uh, it's Friday night, high school football concerns tomorrow. These showers are going to be trying to push in by about kickoff. Now, not real concerned about lightning. I can't totally 100% rule it out, but I do think that uh, lightning is more likely down towards I-70 into southern Ohio as well. Up here, these are probably just a few showers around tomorrow evening for high school football and heading into the overnight as well. Here's Saturday morning. Now, at this point, uh, our system is really slowing down and, you know, really putting the brakes on as this trough really digs in. And essentially what's going to happen is low pressure is going to park across Pennsylvania for a good chunk of the weekend. We're going to be in a chilly northeasterly flow. I don't think Saturday is an all-day rain. In fact, the steadiest of the rain is probably pretty early. But uh, as we get into the afternoon on Saturday, there can still be some showers around, even though the steadiest of the rain will be out. Uh, east of us. Still, there's going to be some showers popping up from time to time Saturday afternoon. Chilly northeast breeze, a lot of clouds, temperatures no better than the mid-60s on Saturday. Now, Sunday's even worse. <laughs> now, this doesn't look real impressive on the NAM model. Uh, it's scooting the system along probably a little too fast. Let's see what the GFS idea is. It's a little bit better, I think, uh, as far as the speed of things. Now, this isn't going to be anything real heavy in most areas on, on Sunday, although that may change as you get up towards Lake Erie. Uh, you know, when you're looking at an upper-level pattern uh, that looks like this, uh, where you've got a big upper-level low, which will come up here, uh, right there. You've got a big upper-level low almost right overhead or just to the east. This is a lot of chilly air uh, coming down over the warm lakes. Uh, so, you know, you've got lake water temperatures in the 70s, and upstairs in the atmosphere, up here at 500 millibars, the temperature is way down. Even at 5,000 feet, around 850 millibars, uh, the temperatures are going to be unusually chilly for September. So you're going to have lake effect rain showers popping up. There could be some water spouts out over Lake Erie on Sunday. And there could even be some thunderstorms trying to pop up, especially east of Cleveland, up in the Lakeshore counties. I'll have to watch out for that on Sunday. But uh, for us and most of the Moaning and Shenango Valley, it's just a cool, raw day. Our forecast now has 63 Sunday. That's about 12 degrees below the average. Definitely an October preview coming up on Sunday. But as we take a look at next week, I'm going to show you just real quick the upper-level flow here at uh, 500 millibars to show you how much things are going to change as we go into, into next week. We're going to get back into summer, big time. Now, it's not going to be like it was, you know... Uh, over Labor Day. But that upper low is long gone by the middle of next week, and you've got this sprawling ridge down here pumping in the warmth. So we'll get into the mid-80s, I think, for a few days during the middle and, second and latter portions of next week, perhaps even into next weekend as well. Real quick word on the uh, drought situation. The uh, drought, fresh drought, drought monitor, I should say, came out today. Not a real big change here. We're still in the yellow, which means we're in the abnormally dry. It's not a severe drought or anything, but we're in the abnormally dry category. And the reason for that, of course, it hasn't rained much. These are the 60-day rainfall anomalies, difference from average. So 60 days takes us back to about uh, July 10th, and that's about when the pattern changed. We had a wet June, a real wet June, in fact, 
and even the first week of July was fairly unsettled. But since about the second week of July through now, it's been remarkably dry, not only in eastern Ohio and western PA, but look at all the dry weather in the northeast over the last couple of months. And this extends down into parts of the southeast, the Gulf Coast as well. A lot of dry weather uh, across the U.S. since mid-July. Uh, Where's it been wet? Uh, northern Rockies into the northern plains. That's about it. Dry out west, dry for much of the rest of the country as well. The western half of Ohio has done all right. Toledo, Dayton, Lima, places like that, they've done better than the eastern half. There's a distinct edge to the, on the rain anomalies here, pretty close to I-71. All right, I mentioned the longer range. Uh, the, this is the 5 to 10 day outlook on the GFS Ensemble. Notice all the warmth across the eastern two-thirds of the country and all the cool weather out west. Kind of re a very reverse of the pattern that we have had at times this summer and had at times over the last couple of winters, where there's been a big ridge out west and a trough in the east. Now the, the trough is in the west, and next week the ridge will be in the east, so yeah, it's going to be warm. No 90s, but I think uh, 80s are a good bet starting probably Wednesday and taking us perhaps through next weekend. Thanks for watching the Thursday Night Weather for Weather Geeks. So we'll probably be on a little late tonight because uh, we have football on tonight, opening night, NFL season, the Steelers and the Patriots, so the news will probably come on a little bit later. But uh, hopefully you'll stay up and watch that. And if you're an early, ri early riser, check out Jesper Ganti's forecast tomorrow morning starting dark and early at 5 a.m. Have a great night.